Sri Guru Sri Juta Pada Kamalam Sri Guru Vaishnavam Sri Rupam Shagrajatam Shagana Ravunathan Tam Shajiva Shadvaitam Shabhutam Parijana Shahitam Krishna Chaitanya Dev Sri Radha Krishna Padam Sahagana Lalita Sri Vishakham Nitaam Bandi Guru Padattam Bhakta Vrinda Samanita Sri Chaitanya Prabhunga Bandi Nityananda Shavutita Sri Nanda 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 Bandi Radhika Charana Dhaman Gopi Jana Samajukita Vrindavanu Manu Hare Guravi Gaura Chandraya Radhikaya Istadalaya Krishnaya Krishna Bhaketaya Tad Bhaketaya Namo Namo Jaya Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nitya Ananda Sri Atrita Gadadara Sri Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nitya Ananda Sri Atrita Gadadara Sri Vasanji Gaurabhaka Vindu Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 First of all, I offer my most respectful obeisances unto the lotus feet of my Guru Padma, His Divine Grace, Sishimat Bhakti Rakshaka Siddhara Deva Goswami Maharaj, and humbly, humbly praying for the Divine Grace and Mercy. I am humbly praying His Divine Grace and Mercy to be bestowed upon me bestowed upon all of you. Thereafter, <coughs> I offer my prostrated, humble obeisances, respectful obeisances unto the lotus feet of their divine graces. Om Vishnupad, Sashimad Abhay Charunara Binda Bhakti Vedanta Shami Prabhupada Ji Maharaj. Om Vishnu Pāda, Vishimad Bhakti Pramod Purivashamita, Om Vishnu Pāda, Vishimad Bhakti Pragyan Keshavakashamita. And all my Guru Bhakti, all the Rūpānuva Guru Bhakti, humbly praying for their divine grace and mercy, be bestowed upon me, all of us, all of us. Thereafter, offer my most respectful obeisances to the lotus feet of His Divine Grace, Paramahamsa Kula Churaman, Om Vishnu Vasishimal, Bhakti Siddhan, Prasarsati Goswami Thakur, All humility praying for his divine mercy, divine grace. 
bestowed upon me, upon all of us, all of you. Offer my respectful obeisances to the lotus feet of all their divine graces. Srimad Bhakti Vedanta Narayan Goswami Mahayam. Srimad Bhakti Bhagavatita Goswami Mahayam. Srimad Bhakti Sundar Govinda Goswami Mahayam. All the Vaishnava Vrinda. Vaishnava Vrinda. All glories to all Vaishnava Acharyas. All the devotees of their the divine couple and Simon Mahaprabhu. Gauravi So the very nature of Krishna Katha, Puri Katha, is simply infinite. It has got innumerable aspects, unlimited. Okay. So the mundane ocean has got some limitation. The ocean of Krishna Katha, Hari Katha, actually has no limitations. Okay. Truly unlimited. That of infinite nature. So we can begin from anywhere, <laughs> end anywhere, that way. So often I choose, often I choose this way of asking the devotees. If they have some queries, I would like to invite some queries from the good-hearted devotees. Okay, uh, in relation to Mahaprabhu Radha Krishna, in relation to life divine, life of Krishna consciousness. So, if you have any such query on any related to any topics. Of Krishna consciousness. I will be happy to relate to it and give my explanation. Okay, we'll be happy to give illumination on that topics, which will be more relevant to your life. Often I invite the queries from the devotees, because then it will become more relevant to their feelings. Okay. Uh, to their feelings, what they want to know, what they want to really want me to discuss about, giving some illumination, okay, according to their choice. So, if you have other, I can begin spontaneous way of speaking. Okay. You um, have. Okay. What is the explanation of uh, the Jagannath Ashtakam? For um, Prophet Amrath, why? Uh, why you, why uh, do you chant uh, Jagannatha Ashtakam for Prophet uh, Amrath on the? It is already known. The answer to that is already known by the learned devotees. Devotees already know about it, but since you are asking me, asking me in particular about it, okay, so I would like to give some illumination on that. You know, the very term Purushottama, the very word Purushottama is actually uh, meant after Krishna exclusively meant for Purushottama Krishna Chandra, Krishna. Now we know <coughs> Lord Jagannath is none other than Darukadhisa Krishna. Okay, all devotees know about it. Same Krishna Tattva, Lord Jagannath is the same Purushottama Vrindavanadhisa, Lord Krishna Tattva, Vrindavanadhisa Krishna, Lord of Vrindavan Tattva. So, the simple answer to that is Lord Krishna is known as Purushottama, the best, best of all men, I mean real men. Okay, best of all 
male, male manifestation, male oriented manifestation of God, Godhead. I would rather say Godhead. <laughs> okay. I repeat, the best, best conception, the best personality of Supreme Godhead, Divine Godhead, <coughs> Transcendental Godhead, okay, in the male form, literal meaning, so Purusha Uttama. Purusha means Divine Male, Divine Man, Uttama means best of, okay, the best. Not like one of the best, the best. That is Krishna, Purushottama. Okay. And see Jagannath Devi is Krishna. Krishna himself, Daruka, in the Darukadhisha form. More is, is manifesting in see Jagannatha Puridham, Nilachala Puridham, as Darukadhisha Krishna, the Lord of Daruka, who is who is called as, who is lovingly called as, defined as Darukadhisha Krishna, Krishna, the emperor of Daruka. Okay. And because the Puri Dham is also named as Purushottama Kshetra in particular, every Dhamma has got his specific name. Siddham Vrindavana, Vrindavana Dhamma, Ajodha Dhamma, okay, Mathura Dhamma, Daroka Dhamma, similarly Puri Dhamma. The another name of the Puri Dham is known as Purushottama Kshetra, Nirachala Kshetra, Purushottama Kshetra. There were many devotees during this month of Purushottama Brata, Many devotees simply go to Purushottam Dham, Puri Dham, to be observing, to be adherently, devotedly observing this whole month of Purushottam of Brata over there, being, living in the Purushottam Khetra, Puri Dham, under the grace of shelter of Sushimad Jagannadi Suhadra Baladevji. Under the grace of shelter of Simon Mahaprabhu, Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, over there. Because, see, Puridham or Purushot, Purushottam Akshetra, in other words, not only imbued with the memory, not only decorated with the memories of Sri Jagannath, Subhadra Baladevji, Sudarshan Maharaj, but also so much imbued with, so much decorated with the Divine memories, merciful memories of Lord Chaitanya. Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu over there. He lived, he lived a very prominent, important portion of his manifest lifetime. Okay. In Sri Jagannatha Puridha, Purushottamuk Shetra, absorbed in, deeply absorbed in. Tasting, releasing the Sri Radha Krishna Leela, the Divine Leela, Leela is a divine couple there, being, being overwhelmingly, overwhelmingly absorbed in Radha Bhava, in Sri Radha Bhava, hmm. both ways, often mostly in not so much in Sambhoga way, but mostly in Vipralambha way. Absorbed in Sigopi Bhav specifically, very specifically, see Radha Bhava, esoteric, esoteric mood, esoteric feeling, esoteric, esoteric emotions, or esoteric divine emotions of Simati Radha. Emotional love of Simati Radha for her beloved Lord Krishna, Radha. <coughs> so 
for the airport. Just <coughs> same, um, on the same line, can we say that the Pralamba demonstrated by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in Jagannath Puri, this is the sadhana, the perfect sadhana that we should follow? Certainly. Certainly, according to one's own qualification, one should follow. It cannot be, it cannot be presented in a very generalized manner. And each and every one of us, I mean, each and every devotee, may follow that, can follow that. And depending upon one's own inner mood, inner mood, relish, qualifications, taste, I repeat, depending so much upon one's own inner taste, inner low love, what Rai Ramanamita Hudan said. Mm -hmm. In Chaitanya Charitamita Lohan mm -hmm. The inner quality of the low lung, that you know, taste, devotional relish, loving devotional taste, and some qualification accordingly. See, if, if a devotee sincerely feels, sincerely feels that inspiration from the level of Chaitya Guru, divine level of super soul, Chaitya Guru, and just, it becomes like, it becomes like self, self effulgently -effal supported, self evidently supported by the devotees, true feelings from the core of heart, true love feelings, to be doing sadhana, in the being in viprolambha mood in Purushottama Kshetra, then it is quite okay. Then it is, then it is natural, normal for the devotee to have it. This but, Chitya Guru will manifest yes. one's inner mood? Inner mood the taste, specific taste, to be engaged, to be absorbed in that kind of, see, Radha Bhava, that of the prolongo category, the prolongo nature, okay, the prolongo prema. Okay. So, then the devotee, devotee can have that, but it has to be felt from the core of heart with all honesty, sincerity, Truthfulness. Okay, not any type of presupposed planning, kind of, but there has to be living inspirations. Then it is understood, it is the call, it is the invitation from divine couple for that devotee to inspire, inspiring to go in that direction, in that direction to be absorbed in the prolonged mood, the prolonged Krishna Prema mood. Of Simati Radharani. I repeat, Viprolambo, mood of Krishna Prema in Sri Radha Bhavo. And it will be natural for that, for, for that quality devotee, for that kind of devotee, devotee of that kind of qualification to absorb in sadhana with Viprolambo mood. But can it happen just by itself, just by sadhana, no external help from anyone? It can happen by and from one's own deep sadhana, not ordinary type of sadhana, deep, profound sadhana, in through Raga Marko, beyond, yes, beyond Vidhi Marko. With all due respect to Vidhi Marko, but when one is more awakened in Raganuga line, Raganuga stream of bhakti, Krishna Prema, and with all humility is feeling that, that urge, divine urge, divine inspiration, irresistible taste to be absorbed in that kind of viprolamha that kind of sadhana in the prolonged mood, okay, taking the shelter, embracing the shelter of Simati Radha Thakuran 
a bhaja gopis or manjaris, sakhis, manjaris, under the gracious guidance of our qualified Guru Bhargo and also, of course, under the gracious inspiration of Lord Chaitanya, Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who presented that invaluable, matchless gift, matchless ambrosial gift in our life. Is that given to everyone? You were saying this morning, according to the different mood of everyone. Yeah, then one, do, sorry, no, I'm just, I'd like to finish. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, sorry. This sentence. So then, a devotee, a devotee should be understood as qualified to be absorbed in Vipralambha Prema Sadhana in relation to Krishna in relation to Sri Krishna and also of course in relation to Simati Radharani with all humility. Okay. But you know why I am speaking, a specific qualification is required but because Mahaprabhu, Simon Mahaprabhu always tried, wanted to keep it more reserved. The reserved circle only, only mostly with Sri Sarup Goswami Prabhu Rai Ramaranda Prabhu, only very few. You know, devote is pure association of the inner circle. But Mahaprabhu didn't restrict it, really, uh, for other qualified devotees. Okay, although he manifested that pastimes to be to be tasting it, to be tasting that Vipralambha mood, the mood of Simati Radhika in relation to Krishna. Okay, only surrounded by, accompanied by a few few in intimate associates, but yet message is given from Mahaprabhu. If other devotees really come up to that level, feel special inspirations, okay, following Raganuga Bhakti, should be included, can enter. Okay. Because that has also been given to us that Mahaprabhu's Leela, Mahaprabhu's esoteric pastimes, intimate pastimes in that were absorbed in Viprolambha mood. Okay, along with Sarup Dhamadar Goswami, accompanied by Sarup Dhamadar Goswami, Rai Ramananda Prabhu, few others, has been presented to us through Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita. And the Rupa Goswami. Rupa Goswami Prabhu also developed from that more. In that way it, is, it has been presented to all of us. Okay, provided we must have that much sincerity, pure sincerity, with pure humility. And when we have full-scale full sincerity with pure humility, and then we automatically, naturally have the taste, develop that taste, develop the specific, special taste for absorbing in Viprolambha Prema Sadhana in relation to Krishna, then of course that is the qualification of the devotee, the devotee. The devotee is welcome. The devotee can definitely be absorbed in that sadhana. Again, humility is very important. Otherwise, a devotee should not think that he or she has abruptly, all of a sudden, become very high-class devotee now. Now I don't need any, any kind of common type of sadhana or other things, I became, already became very high class because I'm feeling such inspiration. And so, I will do only the high class sadhana, why low class sadhana? <laughs> then, it, a mess will be, it, it, it will be a mess. Okay? Because a purely high class, very high class exalted devotee, always have so much respect. Or even devotees of the Shanta Rasha, Dasha Rasha, Shokha Rasha. Example is, Great example is our Sri Ravana Adash Goswami Bhava. See? So. Every. Why, why are you writing about it? Sorry. Because you tell example of Sri Ravana Adash Goswami Bhava, how he had respect from You see? Dashal. Dashal me rashastu rashastu nitta. Shokhaya me. Namastu, namastu, nittam, in that way, he expressed. 
let my all devotion, <coughs> let my let there be my devotion, my attachment towards Dasharasha. Dasharasha. Meaning, Sukharasha is too high for me. I offer my <laughs> respectful obeisance <laughs> to the Sukharasha. See? Becoming the devotee of Madhurja Rasha, high class Madhurja Rasha, he's educating us, teaching us how to also have full respect for any any service from, of any Rasha in relation to divine couple. Because, see, a pure devotee, exalted devotee, exalted devotee's character is this, I repeat, a very exalted devotee's Okay, devoted devotees of Krishna, the character is this that he or she respects everything in relation to Krishna. Each and everything in relation to Krishna, Simati Radhika. Okay? With full heart, whole heart. Because everything of Krishna has they consider everything of Krishna did, okay, must be respected in full. Because Krishna, Krishna to Bhagavan, Sayam, every part, every portion, every point, every level of the Rasha in relation to Krishna, of love of Krishna, devotional love of Krishna, must have full respect, must be fully respected. Complete, full, with full-fledged respect. Sometimes when comparison comes, Krishna Das, Kaviraj Goswami Prabhu, very nicely, beautifully explained about that. Jar Jai Rash, Shai Hai Sarvottam, Tatastu Haiya Vicharile Ache Tarotam. A particular specific rasha for every devotee. I repeat it, this a specific rasha of a devotee, his specific activities, okay, a specific devotional love activities in relation to Krishna for a devotee is considered to be the highest for him. Mm. I repeat specific rasha and taste, devotional taste, love taste of a devotee in relation to Krishna Radhika is felt within in heart as the best of all. Okay. Mm -hmm. For every rasha, best of all. Mm -hmm. Devotee of Shantarasha thinks, my Shantarasha, this mm -hmm. is the best. Dasha, devotee of Dasha, Rako, Shoksha, Rasha, Bhatsha, they all respective, respectively feel Mine is the best. My way, my loving devotional way, okay, my, you know, my love mellows in relation to Krishna Radhika is the best. But Sri Kaviraj Goswami could then explain further. But when we are not judge. But when we consider, when we deeply consider, analyze them, deeply, uh, how to say, when we are deeply considering about all of them or um, trying to understand all of them in a very appropriate way, from a neutral stand of, you know, Considerations, I would say. I don't want to use the word judgment here because judge, the word term judgment is very inapplicable. Sorry, very inappropriate. Very inappropriate in this context when we, be, we become judgmental. When we judge something, we become, we take a superior position and try to judge. Okay? In the world, in the transcendental world, of devotional love of Krishna is just all. Our position should be the opposite. Okay. With all humility, okay. we must take the position of low, lower than low, with all humility. Okay. Oppo op opposed, almost opposed to 
I am superior with all false pride. Then, the more the humbleness increases, the more there is humility, the more gain is there. Because it's revelation. Even so, all our considerations, feelings, conception about Radha Krishna Lila actually revealed in our heart. It cannot be realized through ascending method. But all are actually realized by descending mm -hmm. method to the path of revelation, okay. to the path of scriptural knowledge, to the, to the path of visions of holy scriptures, through our Guru Bhargo, pure devotees of your, and also through the path of revelation, through Chaitya Guru. Happens. So back to the point. So Kaviraj Goswami Prabhu explains further. So, but when from a very neutral stand of our uh, broad considerations or uh, analyzation or understanding, when you look into them, okay, then of course there are differences, there are distinctions, hierarchies okay, among all those rushes. But again, again he mentioned, but every devotee of every each rasha Every devotee of the, their respective rasha simply thinks mine is the best. Achinta Veda Veda, character, also here. So both are reality, see. And often, a time to time, even the devotees of the highest quarter, devotees of the highest level of the rasha, Madhurja rasha level, also teach us educates us, inspires us, how to respect even Shanta Rasha, activities of services of Shanta Rasha, mm -hmm. Dasha Rasha. That's Venukita. Yes, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. Therefore you see Madhurja Rasha also contains Shanta, Dasha, Shukha, Vatsala within. Mm -hmm. But again, with a very distinct, quite distinct flavor, distinct taste, very special taste, let me explain. When we see Shantarasha in Shantarasha, Shantarasha from Shantarasha level is of one quality. But same Shantarasha while found embraced within Madhurja Rasha of higher quality. Similarly, Dasharasha in Dasharasha in Dasharasha in a basic way is one quality, Rasha. This Dasharasha is situated only on Dasharasha. Okay, based on Dasha Rasha, is of one quality. Same Dasha Rasha, in similar way, same Dasha Rasha, Shokha Rasha, Vatsala Rasha, while embraced within Madhurja Rasha, they have higher qualities. They are more, they are more unique and distinct, special qualities. Okay, because they are qualified by Madhurja Rasha. All Shanta, Shanta, Dasha, Shokha, Vatsala, all the Rasas become extra qualified. Okay? More qualified, more specially qualified by the association company of the Madhurja Rasha. Therefore, there will be some distinctions. So therefore, when Raghunath Dash Goswami Bhat, okay, paying obeisance to Shokha Rasha, okay, and claim, and also, expressing, let there be all my attachment, my devotion towards Dasha Rasha. Shokha Rasha is even too high for me. I pay my, I, I pay my respectful obeisance. I rather pay my respectful obeisance towards Shokha Rasha. Let my, okay, let my devotion, let my loving devotion flow, first be attached with Dasha Rasha flow in Dasha Rasha to be serving okay, my Divine God and Divine Goddess, uh, my, my Swami and Swamini, Rasha Raja Krishna, Mahabhava Sharupini Simati Radhi. That is Raghunath Dasha Goswami Prabhu's mood, being a high class devotee of the Madhurja Rasha, being Manjil. That's how we are educated, that's how we are taught. We are educated, we are inspired by our Guru Varko, great, glorious Guru Varko. 
not only not only by Sri Raghunath Das Goswami, but by also other <coughs> Goswamis. Okay. As we look into the lifestyle of Sri Raghunath Goswami, look into his character, we also see became. The Rupa Goswami, Purushanathan Goswami, all Goswamis, they became so much respectful for any, any part of Krishna consciousness, any part of loving devotion to Krishna, because ultimately they are relating to Krishna, no matter which rasa, okay, they are relating to Krishna, even comparatively, I don't mean in literal sense, even comparatively, lower kind of the rasa, in relation to Krishna, I mean in a not in a literal sense, please. It's comparatively. Even the comparatively lower type of rasa like Santa Rasa, service in Santa Rasa, service in Dasha, are great for them. Objects of great respect, full respect for them. That's how they revere Krishna. Not only love, behind the behind their loving appreciation for Krishna Radhika behind their loving devotional appreciation and de dedication for Radharani and Krishna, they have got also so much reverence and respect when required. Mm. While it is required, reverence may not be required all the time, understandable, according to Leela. But on tattva, on the basis of the tattva, okay, in relation to, to show respect to the Krishna tattva, all Krishna Lila Tattva, they have full respect, they pay full respect to all levels of Rasas mm. and service of the Rasa in relation to Krishna. Simati Radha. We can find this in Briyad Bhagavatamritam mm. and yes. Patyarasamrita mm. Sindhu. Yes. And this morning we were also, <coughs> today we were also discussing mm. about that in Gopala Champu. Gopal Champu. Even if that. See, you see, Gopala Champu, it is so wonderfully, beautifully described. Upon waking up in the morning, one of the daily duties, not just duty, one of the daily activities of Simati Radharani is just to go see Ma Jashoda and Nanda Maharaj touching their feet, touching their lotus feet, paying obeisance. Because in the aspect of the Leela, Simati Radharani is daughter-in-law, daughter-in-law of Nanda Maharaj and Mahajashoda. So giving full respect and taking blessings. Whereas by Tatastha Vichara, you know, comparative by Simati Radharani is Mahabhava Sharupini, higher than having higher position compared to Mahajashoda and Nanda Maharaj. And she herself paying so much respect, paying respectful obeisance in the morning is one of her essential activities, paying full respect to Mother Jashoda and Nanda Maharaj in the morning, okay, touching their feet, taking their blessings, grace. Why? In relation to Krishna, ultimately. After they are Krishna's parents, Krishna's eternal parents. And see in relationship, daughter-in-law, eternal daughter-in-law. Because through Gopala Champu, see Radharan and Krishna are eternally married, you know, Shakya Leela. Shak, by by, <coughs> by Shakya Leela, it has been well established. It has been well established by Sri Jiva Goswami Prabhu. Because it is also truth, absolute truth. That is the truth. Because we call divine couple. Divine couple means <laughs> they are eternally transcendental husband wife. Okay. Again, in order to enhance, enhance the taste of their love pastimes more than that, okay, to make more enhancement and in other words to increase it more and more, they accept the dramatic ways of parokya lila, okay, artificially creating, artificially creating all obstacles and impediments, and some sort of 
some sort of so-called problems. <laughs> okay, we just started it dramatically. In order to enhance the desperate feelings, or intense feelings between Simati Radharani and Krishna to be united with each other. Just as we this in this form we are discussing, Guru, Guru Mahar gave a very nice example. Guru Bhargava explained very nicely. See, there we see a flowing river. See a flowing ri river in a natural way. Okay, it has current. River water, river water flowing with a current. It's called current. But when we put a dam, when we create a dam, create obstruction right on the river water, that's how they, you know, that's how they produce hydroelectricity. And then they open some small hole okay, on some portion of the drum. Then the water flows like anything, 10 times, 20 times speed, because of, because of creating obstruction before that water current. So then with so much more weight and speed and power, water flows. Parukya, Parukya Lila is like that. It is that. Because in the Shakya Lila, everything is easily available. Whatever Krishna wishes from Simati Radharani, whatever Simati Radharani wishes from Krishna, all are eternally licensed, okay, easily available to them. Okay. So, they want to add a special taste. So, they consider they consider to add a very special taste in their love pastimes, a devotional love pastime, transcendental love pastime. So wanting to, desiring to increase its power, intensity, desiring to enhance, enhance its intensity of their love pastimes, love feelings, desperate love feelings for each other, just by their sweet will. Many obstacles are coming. In Sakya Lila, there is no obstacles. In the higher Madhurja Rasha pastimes, there are no pastimes. But also, so, so many obstacles are found. Many obstacles are created, found in the Parokya Lila. Okay, Parokya pastimes. And see, this Ovisharo Lila. In the, mid, in the midnight, mid stormy night, so dark and storm, heavily raining, Raja Gopis, Mati Radharani, running towards Krishna, were attracted by flute song. Feet, feet are bleeding. They're on the thorny forest, through the thorny forest. Can, can you imagine all transcendental? So much transcendental. Through the thorny forest, Forest path, feet are getting hard and bleeding, Re taking rainfall, shivering in cold, okay, dark, stormy night, ferocious animals, snakes, other ferocious animals, dark night, but mo moving, moving forward, moving forward, running towards Krishna through that, Okay. In spite of their, in spite of their so much physical distress, they don't care. They don't, they don't at all care about anything of their physical, physical pain and distress, being filled with the love of Krishna. They are taking pain, so it's so pain, so penance, such a great penance for them taking so much pain to move towards Krishna, but they have got so much irresistible attraction towards Krishna, love attraction, painful love attraction towards Krishna. They are running besides themselves. They are running, losing, without caring, simply running towards Krishna with, without caring about their physical pains, okay, great physical pains and wounding, getting wounded, they don't care. So filled with joy of 
divine love of Krishna, filled with ambrosial joy, bliss of love of Krishna. Despite taking so much pain and austerity, heavy rainfall, pain, feet are bleeding, risky is there, you know, many ferocious animals there, in the dark night. These are all can be found in Parukya Leela, more Bhamma, Parukya Leela. And also other aspect, other aspect, <coughs> okay, in Simati Radharani's and Brajagopi's Leela, okay, transcendental Leela with Krishna, is to have Bhamma Bhav, leftist, to be in leftist mood rather than wing. How do you say right, rightist mood? Right. So, rightist mood is represented by more Shakyo Lila, Shakyo Bhavan. Right, everything is, <coughs> Shaky, in Shakyo Lila everything is fairly easily available. Whenever Krishna, whenever Krishna is wanting something from Prajagopi, Simati, Radhika, they are ready to give, ready to offer, easily available. Okay. That is also very great. Shukharup Krishna Karin Shukha Ashadam Bhakta Gane Shukha Dite Ladini Karan Krishna Himself is the full fledged embodiment or personification of all bliss, divine bliss, ambrosial bliss. And that said, the, the full fledged, the full fledged, the complete personification of all ambrosial bliss now, wanting further bliss from Simati Radharani from Mahabhava Sharupani, from Simati Radharani. She is even the greater personification of all the blissful love of Krishna, for Krishna. Krishna has irresistible attraction to taste that love, love of Simati Radharani, for him, and thereby he is also tasting his own love for Simati Radharani, being complemented by each other. Both kinds of st love stream being now complemented by each other. Krishna's love for Simati Radharani and Simati Radharani's love for Krishna. Both want to feel into both. Both want to release. Both flows, you know, both versions of their love feelings for each other. So Mahaprabhu actually released both, both categories. So there comes, yes, so parokya mood, mood, leftist mood, simply appear, simply manifest in for higher and higher enhancement. Intensity of the love pastimes, love pastimes, pure love pastimes, yes. yes. You said, you told me this morning <coughs> that Krishna in Tattva, he's supreme being. And she met Radhika, she cannot be higher in Tattva, you said that. Huh? I, I, I understood, I, I agree. I just wanted to hear from you, how do you explain Shri Bhakti Rakshak Shri Goswami Maharaj, when he explained Gayatri Mantra, Brahma Gayatri, saying that the worship of Brahma Gayatri is actually Shri Mati Radhika. Yes, Radha Koyim Karcha. So before, <clears throat> okay, so before I touch on this point, I start discussing on this. I would like to clarify again, when I said Krishna is higher than Simati Radhika, only by tattvic nature, as, as it is described that Krishna is to Bhagavan Swayam, Krishna is Purna Shakti Man, and Simati Radharani is Krishna Shakti. So in that sense of the tattva, I said that. But Simati Radharani is also higher than Krishna in other way. Okay, in the, in love consideration, okay, in, in, the, in, the, in the consideration of 
her full dedication and dedicated love towards Krishna, de devoted love towards Krishna, it is so attractive, so powerful, it overpowers Krishna. In that way, Srimati Radharan is higher. Shakti also becoming higher than Shakti Man. <laughs> okay, in the Leela consideration. From the Leela perspective, okay, of love pastimes, love attraction, love power, Srimati Radharan is higher than Krishna. But from the Tattvic concept, Tattva aspect of Krishna, Krishna is higher. So, we can say following in the following in the great wonderful expression of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarsitakur Prabhupada, we can conclude both are higher than each other. <laughs> <laughs> it so happened once <clears throat> during, during one festival, devotees cooked many delicious dishes offered to Krishna. Okay, offer, after, after offering to Lord, then at some point they, they brought the prasadam to Srila Prabhupada, Saraswati Thakur Prabhupada I am talking about. They, <coughs> they joyfully brought uh, the prasadam to Srila Saraswati Thakur Prabhupada to feed, okay, to feed their Gurudev, beloved Gurudev. And at some point, because they are not one cook, several, I think there are few cooks involved uh, in, in, on that occasion, festival occasion, must be either Janmashtami or Sri Radhashtami, big festival occasion, all Mahaprabhu's appearance there. I don't exactly remember, but I clearly remember the great example, okay, great comment by him. Then a few cooks are involved, then at some point they lovingly began to ask their Gurudev, Prabhu, they used to call they always would not call Sri Prabhupada all the time. But in a very dear way, a short form, uh, in a very short form, often in a very beloved way, they used to call Prabhu, very respectfully beloved way. They used to call Prabhu, sometimes Prabhupada, sometimes Prabhu. Because Prabhu, the term Prabhu to them is supreme. We, we even address the Supreme Lord as Prabhu. Many places, only Prabhu. Prabhu or Prabhupada, <clears throat> which one you think more delicious? Which one is the best delicious? Can you tell us please? Which of the items in this prasadam <laughs> you like the best? Okay. <laughs> ah. you, you, you think the better, the best. Then Sri Prabhupada was eating, releasing prasadam. Some point looked up to them, saying, <clears throat> in Bengali he replied, Shabta che Shabta bhalo. All of them, okay, all of them are tastier, more delicious than each other. <laughs> all the items of the bhava and prasadam are actually more delicious than each other. Smile at them and continue taking Krishna. <laughs> Same way. So, Purna Shakti Man Krishna and Purna Shakti, both are full fledged. Both are unlimited. Both are infinite. Both are of infinite nature, that of unlimited nature. Purna Shakti Man and Purna Shakti. Basically, non different by tattvic nature. Okay. So, both are higher than each other greater than each other. That is the Achinta Veda with conclusion. <laughs> that should be the conclusion from the stand of Achinta Veda Veda, which is finally inconceivable. Okay, because so transcendental to our limited human knowledge, human ability of conceptualizations. So, simply transcendental. So Mahaprabhu said, it's just you know. You can only comprehend to certain extent not more than that. You have to really, if you have to really comprehend more than that, you also need to be transcendental first in order to realize more about the transcendental reality. Okay, transcendental truth. Otherwise, you cannot comprehend. 
you cannot comprehend much. So therefore he finally said, you know, finally it is inconceivable to you. You can only comprehend to a certain extent only. Beyond that you cannot. And don't worry about that. If you want to comprehend more, it will be naturally revealed by grace. Okay, by grace, by mercy. But you don't try to understand through ascending method. You become subject and you make, try to make it object of your knowledge and think, I can conceive. It doesn't happen mm -hmm. that way. Always happens the opposite way, through revelation, mm -hmm. descending method. Avaruhu pamtha. Means through revelation, divine revelations. So, yes, so, <clears throat> I just first, I wanted to clarify about this point, that both are higher than each other. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> and one is Rasha concept, Rasha conception, Leela conception, other is Tattva conception. Okay. By Tattva conception, Krishna is higher than Srimati Radharani. By Rasha power, power of the Rasha love for Krishna, Radharani is certainly higher than Krishna. Okay. They are complementing each other. Basically they are non-different. As I mentioned this morning, Radha Purna Shakti, Krishna Purna Shakti Man, Dui Bastu Bheda Nahi, Shastra Paraman, from Chaitanya Charita Amrita. Sharudamadar Goshai to all sex men, Radha, Krishna, Pranaya, Vikitil, Ladini, Shakti, Rashmat, Ekatmana, Bhupi. Okay. And in Mahaprabhu, from there, Ekatma. Ekatmana, Bhupi, Bhupi, Pura, then Deho, Bhedam, Gatavuto. From Ekatma, they are dividing into two forms to release their Leela, to release their okay, ambrosia pastimes, nectar of the Leela. Deho, Bhedam, Gatavuto. Sri Chaitanya Nakhyam Prakata Madhuna Taddayan Chaikya Mahaktam Again Chaikya Mahaktam Chaitanya Nakhyam Prakata Madhuna Taddayan Chaikya Mahaktam Radha Bhava Dhuti Shubalitam Naomi Krishna Sharupam See, here, here he was praising, he was praising of that Krishna He was narrating the glory, narrating the glories of that Krishna who is enveloped, embraced by the Radha Bhava, by the divine mood and complexion of Simati Radha. Her devotion of, I would say, I would say devotional love, complexion and mood. Devotional love, mood, and complexion of Simati Radha. Because devotions, devotional love also has got colors, complexions, on the, on the plane of perfection, plane of Goloka Vrindavana, divine abode of Krishna. Each and everything manifests in multifariously beautiful way, like colorful, <coughs> like colorful rainbow, not only black and white. Never like just only black and white. So limited conception. It's like rainbow. Rainbow conception of Radha Krishna consciousness. Okay. And taste also like that. Not one rasha taste. Shanto, dasha, shakho, vatsalva, madhur, chidasha. Mm. They also manifest in variegated ways, beautiful ways. Although they are named in a particular way, level. But they are also not limited within their basic level. They have reciprocation through interrelationship. Shanto, Dasho, Shokho, Batsolo, Madhu, Madhu, all are interrelated. They are not really separate from each other. Even the Dadosha Rasha, twelve Rashas, like a garland, each flower is separate. At the same time, they are not separate in a garland, real garland. Yes. So we have to view, we have to understand all of them. Okay, in particular as well as in common, relatively and also holistically, absolutely. <clears throat> Holistic conception of Radha Krishna Leela, Radha Krishna Tattva should be realized, should be understood, very important.
So, that could be point. <coughs> yes. So, sort of Dhamadur Goswami paying full respectful obeisances, okay. singing the glories of that Krishna, embraced, embraced by the uh, devotional love, complexion, and mood, loving devotional mood of and complex of Simati Radhika, Mahaprabhu. And that was, that was realized by them. Mahaprabhu showed them to write Ramananda, the same, that mysterious, that wonderful vision. Wonderful Tattvaya, Rasaraj and Mahabhav, Duya Guru. Rasaraj and Mahabhav, Duya Guru. Rai Ramananda Prabhu could not simply hold his normal, his normal way, fell unconscious on the ground. He could not hold his, hold himself in normal, usual way. He felt overwhelmed, fell on the ground, losing external consciousness. Then when Mahaprabhu woke him up again, he was surprised. <coughs> Again, surprised to see Mahaprabhu in Sandashi. <laughs> in Sandashi form. Just a moment ago, he found the same divine Sandashi <clears throat> as this combination of two forms, a combination of two forms as Rasaraja and Mahabhava. Okay, in interrelationship. How could again, all of a sudden, the Rasaraja Mahabhava now became? Manifesting a Sannyasi form you know, in Bhava, because Rai Ramananda Prabhu was still in Bhava. He has not yet come to the complete external consciousness. So he was being a wonderstruck. Just, just a moment ago I found I found you in both beautiful, most beautiful forms as Rasaraja Krishna, Mahabhava Sarupini Simati Radharani. Now I see you in beautiful golden Sannyasi form. That was like happy surprise, very, how to say, happy or some sort of ecstatic surprise, nectarine surprise for him. And Sarup Damodar Goswami Prabhu you now described both aspects in his, in this verse. Radha Krishna Pranayavya Gitil Ladini Beautifully described, sang the glory of Mahaprabhu. Mm. First, starting with Yadadaitanga Brahma Panishadi Tadat Pashatamula, mm. Yahatman Tarjami Purushaiti Sosham Shudhava in this way. Sorry, Sir Jay Purna Jahil Bhagavan Shashayamayam Nachaitan Nath Krishna Jagati Parutatam Paramiya. See, here he says, there is no other, there cannot be greater tattva, there cannot be. Any supreme tattva, supreme tattva of Isha, greater than, higher than Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. See here, again he is speaking like that, that way. There cannot be any tattva of God, conception of God, greater than Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Knowing, upon knowing, combination of Radharani and Krishna. In this way, then, second. Second verse, Anur Pita Chari Nuchi Rat Kurunaya Bhatishna Kalu Shamar Puita Munnatur Jala Shamsha. That's yes. a Rupa Goswami. Ah, but yes, but yeah, that was by Sarupa, it is by Rupa Goswami Prabhu. Kaviraj Goswami Prabhu collected all those. See Chaitanya Chaitanya. Right, you are very right. It was by Rupa Goswami Prabhu. Then, <coughs> Siradhaya Pranaya Mahima Kidisho Vanaya Iba, also by Sri Rupa Goswami, yes. No, Rupa Goswami Prabhu. Sri Radhaya Pranaya Mahima Kedisho Vanaya Iba Shadyo Yenad Bhuta Madhuri Ma Kedisho Va Madhiya Shokhan Chasha Madhanu Bhavata Kedisham Beti Loha Tadbhava Dhyaya Samajani Sachi Garva Sindhu Harindhu Beautiful, wonderful verse. All around Simati Radharani and Radharani. See, describing Krishna, singing the 
seeing the ambrosial glories of Krishna in, in ambrosial relation to Simati Radha. Throughout all these verses, see, except for the first verse, the more tattva, description of the tattva, Yadadvaitanga Brahma Panishadi Tadapashatana, that is the more tattic description about Mahaprabhu. Then other verses all are related to Simati Radha. Unnato Jala Rasham, Madhurja Prem, then Radha Krishna Pranaya Brikitil, Radha Krishna Pranaya Brikitil Ladini, Ladini Shakti Rasham. Then Sri Radha, Pranaya Mahima, all are related to Simati Radha. Okay. Describing, describing Mahaprabhu Gauratattva in relation to Simati Radha. Very wonderful. <clears throat> so, again, what, what was your query? About the, the writing of Gayatri Mantra in relation with Shumati yes. Radhika. Oh, that is another, <laughs> that's another vast, wonderful way <laughs> to explain. I will take another one, maybe one hour more to explain. <laughs> we don't mind. <laughs> mm. oh, that, is, that is one of the most wonderful, super excellent gifts of Sri Guru Maharaj. A very wonderful explanation. Yes, inspired from the core of our heart. So he also admitted it was revealed mm. as he was as he was he was meditating on the Brahma Gayatri more and more, went deeper and deeper, went higher and higher. He reached Radha Darsham finally from his direct revelation. In revelation, he presented that. And he so nicely, wonderfully presented step by step, starting from Om Bhur Bhubasha, description of the planetary systems, Om Bhur Bhubasha, Ittadi, etc. Tatsavitu Varenam. Tatsavitu means the manifester of all this universal system. All this planetary system, universe, universe, you can say. The main Svabhitu means the very manifesto of the whole universe, cosmos. So now, Varanam means, okay, even worshipped. Now, worshipped by that Svabhita means the manifesto of the whole universe, somewhat like Brahmaji, Sistikarta. Shabitu. Brahmaji. There are Brahmaji of different categories, you know. So, so even most respectfully, fully, most respectful and holistically worshipped by the manifester, in other words, creator of the whole universe. What is that? Hmm. <coughs> barennam. What is that Barennam? Bhargo. <coughs> Bhargo means, in simple term, Bhargo means effulgence. Luster. Divine luster. Divine effulgence. To the limitlessness. <coughs> in other words, divine, very divine effulgence. In other words, divine luster, divine effulgence of Deva, Krishna, Krishna, okay, to the limitlessness and in, in innumerably multifarious ambrosial aspects. Although it is described as literally by literal term, it is being described as just only effulgence or luster. But it's not just that, much more than that, because it's much more than our mundane material conception of lights, effulgence or luster. Because that effulgence has got taste in it, has got feelings, taste, how to say, all the alive, ambrosial love emotions in that. So it's the illuminescence, effulgence of the devotional love, you know, of the unlimited loving devotional 
loving devotional emotion activities of Srimati Radharani in relation to Krishna. So, it's not just effulgence, not just luster or effulgence. Here, Bhargo means not just Brahma Jyoti, much more than in usual, ordinary, usual way of the meaning of Gayatri means like worshipping sun god. Okay. Worshipping the effulgence of the supreme god manifesting through sun. Okay. That very simple, normal meaning. But the way Guru Maharaj felt cannot be that. It has much deeper meaning, much higher meaning. Bhargo means it is Simati Radharani. Much more than just Bhargo means Brahma Jyoti. We meditate on Brahma Jyoti emanating from the Deva, Devasha Brahma Jyoti, and finish there. Okay, it just completed that. It's not that. Guru Maharaj felt much more, much higher than that, much deeper than that. And he, he realized Bhargo means Simati Radharani. Because Jyoti, you know, effulgence, illumination, luster, effulgence also represents shakti, potency. It's a symbolical way of manifesting the potency. When something manifests in a very powerful way, it, it is fiery, we see. Very, it, it, becomes, it becomes so much lightening, okay, lightening, fiery, so much with so much effulgence and luster. Okay. So, of course, here it is ambrosial effulgence. So here Bhargo representing Krishna Shakti, not just only Brahma Jyoti type, okay, emanating from Krishna's body, not just like some, some, some sort of ray or light or effulgence, much more, it is Shakti. There is another meaning in a Vedic way, deeper, profound, according to profound Vedic meanings, Bhargo, effulgence, Jyoti also represents Shakti, potency. And uh, effulgence is the result, effect of the potency, one of the effects. When something becomes too powerful, very powerful, it emanates the power through effulgence, rays, it happens in cosmos. <coughs> Guru Maharaj understood through revelation. Bhargo means Krishna Shakti, direct potency of Krishna. Krishna Shakti Ma, Deva is Shakti Ma, and Devasya Bhargo means Shakti of Krishna, Purna Shakti, Simati Radharani. And that we are required, that we are really required to meditate on, on Devasya Bhargo. Mm -hmm. Mm. on the Shakti of Krishna, Shakti belonging to Deva. Okay. Not directly, we are, we, are not, we are not directly needed to meditate on Deva, but Deva Shabhargo, on Radharani. Deva is Krishna. So in Gayatri, in Gayatri Mantra, so we are, we are, being, we are being directly inspired, we are being inspired to be directly more directly to be meditating on Bhargo rather than Deva. On Devasya Bhargo. Bhargo of the Deva. Not directly on the Deva. Because if we, if we have meditation, when, when a devotee can meditate on the Bhargo of the Deva, non-differently non, non they will also reach Deva. Cannot but be. Has to reach Deva. Approaching Deva. But the very path to approach Deva is Bhargo. Essential, not only essential path, it is path come goal, both. Sadhana and Shadha. To meditate on Bhargo, devotionally meditation, meditate on Bhargo, lovingly worship. Okay, must. <coughs> worshipping, worshipping that Bhargo, with all loving devotion, then it will be as good as worshipping Deva at the same time. Okay. 
Bhargo Deva Shadhimahi. Yeah, Dhimahi means not just only doing meditation through some like uh, some knowledge and some consciousness. Here, meditation is worshipping, love worship. Not always a ritual worshipping, much beyond that, because the term adoration, worship should not always be understood only certain ritual ways. That is limited. There are some formal ways, like different types of languages, different types of ways of doing things. But what I am speaking through language is more important. That's the essence. Okay? There are kind of different forms of language. But what I am expressing through language is all important. Similarly, here meditation means worship, love worship, beyond ritualizations. There's some ritual worship. True love worship. True loving devotional worshipping, true loving devotional engagement, complete engagement through meditation. Again, that meditation is also loving devotional. Loving is a loving devotional engagement in full scale loving devotional meditation in relation to uh, Devo and Bharko both. Okay, especially Bharko especially Bharko. Because when, when we can devotionally, we can wholeheartedly meditate, worship Simati Radharani with full loving devotion, they were already worshipped. Mm -hmm. Krishna already receiving that worship, love worship in full scale, in non-difference. So, they worship. Engaging in loving devotional worships, Dhimahi. And praying, same time praying to that Deva and Bharko. Dhiyo Yonaha Prachu. Here I am describing Gayatri because everybody is initiated. <laughs> so, Dhiyo Yonaha Prachu Daya. Okay. Anyway, you have got some special, special. We don't have. That's yeah. because uh, Narayana Maharaj wasn't given to woman the Brahma Gayatri. <laughs> you, have <Brahma> Gayatri. <laughs> you have received. We start from Guru, Guru okay. Mantra, Guru Gayatri. But they, they know. Malati, she knows the mantra. Right. But I'm not, not chanting it because. Anyway, officially, yeah. officially you are not given Brahma Gayatri, but you are given other mantras, no less than Brahma Gayatri. Yeah, the Gopal Mantra, yeah, Gopal and Mantra, Kama Gayatri. Kama Gayatri. So, so, it is just formality, more to do with the formality, as it is coming down, I mean, to some, you know, to some... No, but this is so special explanation yes. of your Guru Maharaj. That he, exactly, that he, so there's, there should be no bar and restriction for all of you to be reading into, to delve into, dive deep into this explanation. Okay, dive deep into this ambrosial explanation. Release it. Okay. So there should, should be no bar and restrictions to for release. More than the formalities of women cannot receive Brahma Gayatri in men. It's just relative. It all depends on the guru also. Yes, very just it's just very ordinary type. Common type of formal traditional way. It's not everything. Never everything. So, yes. Oh, uh, then lastly saying, Dhiyo Yonaha Prachodayat. Then praying, praying to the same Bhargo, Devasya Bhargo, to send, to send more dhyanam, more bhavo of Radha Dasham, Radha Koinkarjam, Loving devotional worship of Srimati Radharani more and more in my life. That is the prayer in the conclusive part of the Gayatri. Please, 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 very kindly, graciously, mercifully send me more and more loving devotional mood and inspiration to engage in your loving worship. O Bhargo, O Bhargo of Deva. Send that ambrosial experience, ambrosial bhava, 
mood and feelings, emotions, realizes and relishes, and is more and more to me. That's the final prayer. Dhiyo yo naha. Dhiyo yo naha prachoda. Meaning, I worship, I wholeheartedly engage in my loving devotional worship to that merciful Bhargo, to that Bhargo belonging to Deva, who also mercifully, graciously sends more, more and more inspiration and taste and relish to further engage in her, in her goals, loving devotional worships. We are so grateful. You are, oh Bhargo, you are so merciful, oh Bhargo, of the Supreme Deva, you are so merciful. We are eternally, infinitely indebted to you, grateful to you. We have, eter we have, we have infinite gratitude. Unlimited gratitude to you. That's the feelings. Now, in the second level, Rukhila Guru Maharaj finds the divine connection between Krishna's Murali, Krishna's fruit song, mm -hmm. and the worshipping, loving worshipping of Bhargo, of the Deva Simati Radharani. You see, it's another wonderful. Mm -hmm. Another wonderful phase, aspect of the explanation of God. Because so the Guru Mahaj points out from the <coughs> derivative meaning, you know, meaning of the term Gayatri, Gana Trayate Iti Gayatri, by singing, by engaging in singing Vata Mantram, the singer, the chanter can receive supreme liberation, can receive high liberation in life. That is called Gayatri, Ganat Trayate. By singing which, by chanting or singing which, which song, Trayate, one gets liberated. That is Gayatri. And Sila Guru Maharaj says, what is Tram? What is the meaning, deeper meaning of the Trayate? Okay, liberates. There are different types of liberations, different types of mukti of different levels. But the highest concept, the highest conception of the full fledged liberation cannot be other than being situated in the Sarupa Dasha. Okay, eternal engagement in the eternal love services to divine God. Sarupadasha. Guru Maharaj quoting, swaying from the scripture, Mukti Hittwan Natharu Pang Sarupena Babasthiti. The highest kind of liberation, the definition, highest definition of highest type of liberation is to be properly situated, appropriately situated, very appropriately and very prominently, okay, Stahima. situated in the Sarupadasha. Sarupena babasthiti means vishesh rupena avasthiti, not just, not just a general type of situation, okay, but like establishment, say establishment. Vishesh rupena avasthiti, babasthiti, that is the highest conception, real conception of the first class mukti, highest conception of the first class, highest type of mukti. Ambrosial liberation, <laughs> not just formal liberation. Mm -hmm. Liberation with ambrosial relish. Okay. Ambrosial identity found in the Sharupa in connection with divine couple in eternity. Eternal love engagement, love service engagement. Eternal engagement in the, in the eternal ambrosial love services to divine couple. Being situated in that is the highest type of mukti, tram. And Gayatri actually 
Gayatri Mantra is able, finally, blesses us, blesses the singer of the Gayatri Mantra with that fortune, with that highest fortune of life, to become firmly situated, established in the eternal loving devotional service to the divine couple, to Krishna, naturally to Simati Radha. Trayate means this, gana trayate, the conception of tran, trayate, is culminating in that, has to. Okay. In real mukti, real tran, highest type of tran of liberation. Okay. So, by singing such Gayatri Mantra, by singing and deeply meditating, devotionally meditating on that, Meaning, engaging in devotional love worships of the Bhargo of Deva, who is belonging to Deva, one can receive such highest type of ambrosial liberation okay, in the Sarupa Dasha. Okay, and highest type of liberation. Wholehearted, holistic engagement in eternal full-fledged love services to divine couple. <coughs> and how Murali Dhani Kami, Muralist, Gayatri Muralist, Kirtana Dhanam, Radha Padam Dhimahi. <coughs> so Guru Maharaj explained same, same truth, same, same beautiful reality in different alternative verses, through different alternative verses. Bhadis Tat Shavitur Barana Bhitam Kshetrabdha Shetbarthakam or Bhurade Shavitur Barana Bhitam Kshetra Goshet Barthakam. In this way, different substitute way, he explained the same tattva with different flavors, different beauties, poetic beauty, poetic and siddhantic beauty, both combined together. At some point he said, Gayatri is none other than Muralista Kirtana Dhanam, which is Radha Padam Dhimahi. So Gayatri, finally see, finally see Brahma Gayatri is none other than the ambrosial treasure of Krishna's flute song, ambrosial treasure which manifests, manifests revealing through Krishna's all attractive, irresistibly attractive flute song. And what is the subject, what is the aim and goal, goal of Krishna's flute song, which is so irresi irresistibly attracted, sorry, which is so irresistibly attractive to the Braja Gopis, to Simati Radharani, is, Muralista Kirtana Dhanam, is calling everyone, finally sending inspiration, divine inspiration, to all the devotees chanting Gayatri, calling them to be engaged in the eternal loving servitude of Simhi Radharani. Radha Padam Dhimahi. So Bhargo Devasya Dhimahi means Radha Padam Dhimahi. Simplified the meaning wonderfully. Bhargo Devasya Dhimahi means none other than Sri Radha Padam Dhima. And that is the sole objective. That's the, that's the soul's object and subject, sole objective, treasure, okay. and message, love message of Krishna's fruit song. Okay. Calling calling everyone to engage, to lovingly engage in the devotional love worship of his beloved Simati Radharani, Radha Padam Dhimani. Not only calling everyone, he himself also giving that message, himself also manifesting, okay, presenting that message through that his divinely beautiful, irresistibly attractive 
फ्लूट सॉन्ग कॉलिंग श्रीमती राधा रानी दैट्स द मेन ऑब्जेक्टिव दैट्स द मेन प्रिंसिपल ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑलमोस्ट होलिस्टिक ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ कृष्णस फ्लूट सॉन्ग मीनिंग ऑफ फ्लूट सॉन्ग टू कॉल श्रीमती राधा रानी कॉलिंग श्रीमती राधा रानी टू बी क्लोज विथ हिम टू कम टू हिम we we are brosially unified with him and brosially united with him so that is the all that's the deepest meanings that's the all final conclusive meanings most profound meanings of All morally dhani, all all fruit song of Krishna, mm -hmm. finally. Mm -hmm. And Gayatri means because Gayatri means Gana Trayati, it is a song representing the aspect of song also. Brahma Gayatri is basically a pure devotional song for Bhargu and Deva. Okay, mantra means it is a, it is song lyrics. Divine poetry, come poetry mantra, lyric, which is which is actually song. It's not to be always only silently meditated or chanted, silently chanted. Or sometimes in the ancient Vedic period, some of the rishi, great rishi yogis, they used to be singing openly, you know, among within their circle, within their inner circle, of course. Well, everybody knew this mantra, Gayatri mantra. Everybody knew, so they sang it. Also chanted and sang. Besides, just silent meditation, inner meditation. So, so Gayatri mantra has got the song criteria also, characteristics of song. And what is that song? It finally connects the song of Murali. Song of the flute of Krishna. In other words, song it finally connects to the flute song of Krishna. In that way, finally, means towards Gayatri mantra is not directly. Well, what what means? It's the very meaning. The essential meaning of the Gayatri mantra, ultimate meaning, goal of Gayatri mantra, also representing such type of song which is connecting to representing Krishna's flute song directly. How to mean? Not by lyrical singing of the mantra, but by inner meaning, essential meaning. What is that essential meaning? Meditate on the bharko belonging to Deva. I repeat, be be deeply engaged, absorbed into the your devotional love meditation, loving devotional meditation, loving devotional worshiping meditation of the bharko of Deva, Krishna. So, the final meanings, final meanings, holistic meanings and holistic objectives of all Krishna's fruit song actually leading us and engaging us directly in the loving devotional service of Srimati Radhika in the form of her Guru. Clear? And also, Guru Maharaj beautifully explained about the term, around the term Bharko and Deva. In Sri Chaitanya Charitam, Sri Chaitanya Charitam, Rita, Sri Kaviraj Goswami Prabhu, he beautifully explained about Devi Kohi Dhatamana Paroma Sundari, Kimba Krishna Puja Kriraar Vasati Nagari. 
Devi Kohi Dotomana Parama Sundari. So here, Sri Guru Maharaj again wonderfully manifesting the, the meaning, great meanings of the Bhargo, inner meaning of the Bhargo. Bhargo means Devi, effulgence. So the very meaning, the very meaning, inner meaning of the Deva, Divdhatu, Deva, means Dibdhatu Kridayam meaning divine playfulness. Kridayam means Kridayam means Leelayam. All the plays of Radharani and Krishna are actually Leela. So it finally means Dibdhatu here finally in its unbridled sense of the meaning, unrestricted, okay, unrestricted sense of the meaning, it means Plays, Kridayam. Plays means here pastimes, playing. The plays of divine pastimes between Radhika and Krishna. So, Dibdhatu, Dibdhatu, Kridayam means Lilayam. Other aspect of the meaning because often one Sanskrit word, term, has got multiple meanings. Not just one meaning, two, three, four together, simultaneous meanings. You know, Kamodhuha, we call by nature Sanskrit language is Kamodhuha Bhasha. Kamodhuha means it's so enriched. Each word can mean many variegatedly beautiful ways, different ways, according to the context. According to different contexts. So here, Dib Dhatu, Deva. Devi means the one, one whose characteristics, one whose very characteristics is to be playful, divinely playful, having pastimes. Also, effulgence. Devi kohi dotomana. Dotomana means is manifesting, bright, very brightly manifesting. Manifesting with effulgence, duti, duti, doto mana. Duti means effulgence. Jyoti, duti means light, luster, effulgence in Sanskrit. Doto mana means looking very effulgent, full of effulgence. Other aspect of the meaning, okay, dibdhatu, paramashundari, extremely beautiful. So, the aspects, the characteristics of playfulness, divine playfulness means Leela, that of effulgence, effulgence, again it's not, it's not really material, material type, material type of effulgence only, effulgence of devotion, okay. love effulgence, Playfulness, characteristics of effulgence, and then thirdly, Paramashundari, that of extreme beauty, many aspect of extreme beauty, and Simati Radharani, extremely beautiful. So Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami was actually explaining the term Devi connected to Deva. Krishna is Deva. Simati Radha Thakurani is Devi, interrelated, so interrelated. Okay. When we see the term Deva in the Gayatri Mantra, Brahma Gayatri Mantra, Deva means Krishna. So the ultimate Deva, the Supreme Deva means Krishna, Supreme Devi means Radhika, Radharani. So here Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami Prabhu beautifully explaining the term Devi one of the names of Simati Radharani, Devi. So, in this way, as <coughs> primarily, okay, in the first step, I am not making any comparison, just firstly, as Devi of very playful nature, Devi of divinely playful character, Leela character, 
one of the essential aspects of Srimati Radhika Devi. It's the, it's the explanation of the verse Devi Krishna Mai Prabhupada mm-hmm. Radhika Paradevata Sarva Lakshmi Mai Sarva Kaunti Sammohini Vara. So, explain the Devi wonderfully. <coughs> so, Devi firstly manifesting the divine characteristics of the divine love play. Okay, divine love play, past times. Secondly, characteristics of Ephalgence, Dotomana. Dotomana means looking so bright, and it's beautifully bright. So bright, effulgent. When you say, oh, you are looking effulgent, means looking so beautiful. Okay, in the further meanings, deeper meanings. So, Dotomana means full of effulgence, divine effulgence, effal- decorated with the effulgence of the love for Krishna. Dotomana. Then next saying, next explaining, Parama Sundari, extremely beautiful. Mm. The Devi is extremely beautiful. Parama means extremely. Sundari, beautiful. Super excellently beautiful. Super excellently beautiful. Parama Sundari. Then next, Kimba Krishna Puja Krirar Vasati Nagari. Again, the other meanings, other aspects of the meanings of the Devi is also the very divine abode of Krishna. Kimba Krishna Puja Krila Vasuti Nagari, the very divine abode, full flesh abode, Nagari, abode, Dhamma, okay, for Krishna's dwelling. For living, living of Krishna means the Goloka is the another Goloka is not other than the one kind of manifestation of Devi, Simati Radhika. Hmm? Baladev Prabhu also manifests hmm? as, a, as a, the form of different paraphernalias for, for the service of Krishna, but finally Simati Radharani. Manifests in full fledged form, Simati Radharani manifesting as the shelter of Krishna, also in the form of divine Dharma, also abode. Krishna Puja Krirar Vasati Nagari, Nagari means divine abode, means city. Here in this context, abode cannot be termed as city, Nagari. Like kingdom, queen, queendom, kingdom, queendom. Okay. <laughs> abode. Abode is the, the Devi is none other than the abode, divine abode of love worships and dwelling for Krishna. Puja and Krira. Love worships and pastimes and for the living of Krishna. Sometimes difficult to explain in English always. Trying to, I repeat, so she is the transcendental abode. She is the complete abode of Lord, of, of, the, of all love worships to Krishna, Puja, all the love pastimes of Krishna, Krira, all, all the playful, playful transcendental pastimes of Krishna, Krira, and Vasati, very place for living, dwelling place. All are combined. So all these aspects of the meanings, characteristics are there in full-fledged way, in the Devi, in Simati Radhika. So see, now Guru Mahal is connecting with the other aspects of the meaning of the Devi. That, <clears throat> in Gayatri, that, that Devi is not just only a of Devi means here Bhargo. Okay, connecting with 
because Devi means Dotomana. Dotomana means most effulgent, beautifully effulgent. Dotomana means full of effulgence. Okay. So that effulgence means Bhagavan. Clear? Okay. Here, the, the here, the, the term Bhargo, which is manifesting through Brahma Gayatri, is none other than that Dotomana Devi, which is described through that verse, Devi Koi, so, Devi Krishna Mai Prakta Radhika Parodevata, in that verse. So, Devi means, Devi representing Bhargo. Bhargo means Devi. Bhargo is personified. In other words, same Bhargo is personified as Devi, being belonging to the Supreme Deva. And how personified? As, Simati, as Devi, Simati Radhika. So that's how Sri Guru Maharaj was divinely connecting between Bhargo and Devi. Bhargo means effulgence, Devi also means beautiful effulgence, connecting to Krishna full of effulgence and unbridled meaning of the Bhargo, effulgence means also supremely beautiful, you know, just as we use the term, oh you are looking effulgent, oh you are looking so bright, effulgent, means you are beautiful, oh so beautiful, wonderful. So the conception of the effulgence is not only limited within light concept here, it has to be understood properly, not just a light concept or luster concept. Ray concept, much more than oh, that. Concept. Yes, beauty, finally beauty. Full of effulgence means here, yeah, full of beauty. See one, one most meaningful, one of the most meaningful aspects of the beauty represented through com complexions, different complexions, different colors, isn't it? See? Color is also representing effulgence, a certain type of lights, otherwise color will be impossible. Color, certain, all different types of colors means it's representing some sort of light, some effulgence, maybe whatever concentration it is, whatever level it is, but it's representing certain aspects of the light, okay, like rainbow, colorful rainbow. You cannot imagine a rainbow without light, without effulgence. Can we? No. So, finally effulgence means the different colors of the beauty, representing rainbow color of the supreme divine beauty. And Simati Radharani is the infinite ocean of that beauty, Devi, supremely beautiful. Okay. Transcendental, that of tra Transcendentally playful, transcendentally beautiful, supremely, super excellently beautiful, and also full fledged abode of Krishna, like center, Nagari, Puja, Krira, Vasati, Nagari. In the first line, said Devi Koi Dotomana, full of effulgence and extremely beautiful, Paramahashundari, and the second line, the, that same explanation. So, <clears throat> she is so wonderfully connected. The explanation of Sri Guru Maharaj Gayatri, the Sri Guru Maharaj revealed explanation of the Brahma Gayatri Mantra, you know, is so beautifully, wonderfully connected with these verses, the meanings of the Devi, Deva, I am speechless. <laughs> All credit goes to the divine grace of Sri Guru Maharaj and Supreme Deva and Devi. I am just, I'm just a very humble, insignificant, tiny servitor, tiny servitor of their lordships. <clears throat> Mm. 
See, you all also inspired me mm -hmm. to engage in such beautiful explanation. So I should also be grateful to you all. Thank, Thank you so much, me. Thank you so much, Maharaj. It's wonderful. But in, in which book is this explanation I have to Gayatri? What, what is the title? But in those in that book you may not find I cannot find the way I explain yes, that's, 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 that's what I that's, that's what I hear. Yeah. <laughs> yes. yeah. But no, I, no, I can read the book now because you have explained it. Part of clarification, by the grace, the real grace of my Guru Maharaj, or my Guru Gargoyen, Divine Kapil Mahaprabhu, ultimately. How we can attain this le the level of surrender we have to Guru Guru Varga? It doesn't come by our own will, also, like, because you say both. God okay. helps those who help themselves. Who you also accept that? Both by your own by your own greediness, in other words, by your own deep eagerness wanting and prayer Kripa. okay higher prayer for their grace to bless bless your desire deep desire okay so both combined it happens by the combination of both lowlam your deep eagerness hankering from your part which is called lowlam okay that, that, that has to come out from come up from your part. And while engaging in prayer for the divine grace to help, then it comes down. So it comes down in response through merciful reciprocation. When both combines, then the success is achieved. Mm, goal is achieved. <laughs> My Guru Maharaj, he, he used to always say, uh, uh, about two fingers of the oh, Dhamma the Dharma. Dharma. Yes. Good example. Two fingers <laughs> representing both sides. What I yes, just explained. Yes, so the Krishna Efforts always missing by two fingers. <laughs> mercy. <laughs> mercy of, of the Lord yes. and our mm -hmm. own endeavors. Yes. But you know, finally, even our lulam cannot simply come by our own ability. Mm. The fact mm. is that. Therefore, humility is so much required. Be humble, have humility. I have nothing, Prabhu. I have no ability to love you. Who am I? But I'm so meager. Who am I? What is my ability, small capacity to love you? It's not easy. It's a great, it's the most fortunate treasure of life. Am I that fortunate, Prabhu, my Lord, O oh Devi, He Deva, He Devi? Am I that fortunate in my life to feel love for you, the divine treasure? I cannot do it on my own. My capacity is so small. Such humility is required. Arti, humility. Humility is the key. Real devotional humility is one of the essential keys to success. You know, to enter into that world. When there is so much, there's so much humility and hankering. I am not able to love you, but I really wish I can. That is the mood, that is the deep feeling. That's a very profound feeling. I truly wish my Lord, my beloved Lord, that I I can actually love you. I truly wish that I am able, truly able to do that. To feel love for you and relate to you in through genuine love, love divine. My ability, you know, my ability is so limited. Even that is also dependent on your grace. On your grace as help to enrich my love. I have got little bit given within me by you as Jeeva Shur. I have got some love feelings too. Got some feelings of liking and love feelings. 
I have taste, I love many things in the mundane world. I love to enjoy, I love many things in this mundane world. Attachment, I have got attachment. I have that. But to offer in relation to you, I don't know how qualified they are, whether they are enough. I do not know whether they are really qualified to be offered to you. Okay, because you are supreme, infinite, supreme, beloved. Compared, compared to that, your position, the qualification of my love is very meager. It's very little. It may be enough to love the mundane stuff, mundane things, mundane people and all. Okay, some mundane dear, near and dear person. But it may not be so enough to love you, to be befitting to the standard of love to be offered to you. Quality love. Okay, to be befitting to the quality of love can be offered to you. I have small ability. Yeah. So I I definitely need Grace's help from you. Okay. Your compassion to enrich, to fructify, how do you call fructify, to enrich my love, whatever I have got, my love okay, for you, so that it becomes qualified to be offered to you. For humility is the greatest, humility is one greatest friend in our life, you know, humility. Of course, the, here I'm using the term humility in a very positive sense. Humility never means weakness, mm -hmm. never ever. About the question. That's a total wrong concept mm -hmm. about humility. Vaishnava humbleness and humility never means any weakness. Lack of confidence that has Lack nothing confidence. to do with it. No. Depreciation. It is. It is like humility of Hanumanji in relation to Ramchandraji. Mm -hmm. Humility of Lakshmanji in relation to Ramchandraji. Humility of great Krishna devotee associates. Like Very Pati, powerful. Puri Goswami yes, yes. Another example. Mm. Beautiful example. It's so powerful. Very powerful, but it's something so humble, so gentle. There is a lot of power in Vaishnava humility to attract the attention of the Supreme, Supreme Divine. Attract the attention of Divine couple. Attention and care both. To attract the attention of, uh, sorry, in order to attract the special and care from the Divine Couple, Mahaprabhu, humility. Therefore Mahaprabhu laid so much importance, stress mm. on becoming humble, having humility, in order to be associating with the infinite, much greater, much bigger than you. Okay, in order to, in order to be having continued association of something, the, the divine truth, divine reality, okay, divine couple, much greater, much higher than you, infinite. So when you are going to associate, when, you, when we are going to associate with something, some truth, super subjective divine truth, much greater and higher than you, infinitely greater and higher than you, cannot you, cannot but. You have to become humble by comparison. Okay. Automatically it will happen. And to become humble in that way, to have that humility never means weakness. It means a true attraction towards real development, progressive development to the higher and to the higher and higher, greater than you. And therefore, in comp comparatively, you are thinking of yourself, feeling of yourself, so small. Unworthy. Comparative study. Huh? Unworthy. Unworthy. In order to relate to the supremely, infinitely worthy 
divine reality, supreme, embro- supreme divine truth. Okay, divine couple. We have to feel unworthy. Unworthy. Although the great pure devotees have a lot of worth, so much worthy, still they feel I'm so unworthy. To have more and more, never stopping, never ending, with never ending, never ending journey, never ending progress, never ending progressiveness to the infinite, in relation to the infinite. Okay. My loving regards to all of you. All glories to all the assembled devotees. All glories to all our Guru Bhargava. Simon Mahaprabhu and the Divine.